What is going on? My name is Psyche and welcome back to another Dead Cells run. Today's episode will be all about explosions. I'm going to be using the explosive crossbow to showcase it in a run. In case this is anyone's first time watching me, I do Dead Cells content, making guides for various levels of the game as well as 5 PC runs just like this one. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you don't like what you see at any time, you can always just unsubscribe. So the explosive crossbow is seen to be one of the best items in the game, especially for survival, which is pretty rare if you think about it. The explosive crossbow has two attacks. One is the range attack, and one is the melee attack. Now, I believe the explosive crossbow has been reworked sometime in the past year. Before, I think it was just the range attack, which I think it was like okay, but it just wasn't interesting enough. Anyways, find a challenge rift in the first biome, which is very nice. Um, I'm going to speed up the footage for this part. I don't think it's worth watching me just like dodging through the saw blades and stuff, but I want to show off the entire footage of it. Overall, not too exciting, just the first biome. Um, one thing that I'm wondering is that if the trap damage from the spikes in challenge rifts actually scale as you like go further into your run. So if you like get a challenge rift in the high peak castle area, like do you actually take more damage if you run into the spikes than as you would from the prisoner's quarters? That I'm not too sure. Anyways, just starting off in the prisoner's quarters, I don't play on custom mode because I don't think that's how the game is supposed to be played. I just happened to find the explosive crossbow in one of the tubes and I thought okay I might as well just do a run with it so I will be keeping the explosive crossbow with me for the remainder of the run though I will find upgrades for it when the time arises. I've seen a lot of people think that like the weapon tier actually matters as in like the items that you get in the beginning are the fourth tier and then you get better ones as you go. The highest tier possible in the game is the 12th tier which you can get in the caverns or the astrolab. Now some people think that like if you have a lower tier item then you have a lower chance of winning but that's actually not true. I have seen people win with runs where like they just picked up an item like from the tube area and they like carried it all the way to the end of the game so weapon rarity doesn't really matter that much it's really about like synergy and how you use it. I move on forwards to the Dilapidated Arboretum. This isn't really something that I usually do, but since I have a range setup, especially with the Explosive Crossbow, pretty much every single enemy in the area just like, gets demolished. The Explosive Crossbow does so much damage. All you have to do really is to just press the attack button and then the enemy in front of you dies. It's as simple as that basically. Now obviously this can also be a curse because it's just too simple to use and I'm not really a fan of two-handed items in general, but I wanted to showcase this run because might as well. I wanted to showcase like just how, f just how like powerful the explosive crossbow is. And I picked up the ice armor because it's actually one of my, it's becoming one of my favorite items in the game actually. I sometimes run it in both tactics as well as survival because in tactics, because your health is so low, you can't really afford to get hit. But if you take an off-color ice armor, you can afford to get hit at least once. So it definitely takes some getting used to, but if you can get the best of ice armor, definitely go for it. It's just one of the most amazing defensive options in the game right now. It gives you the option to play more recklessly, so you can probably accomplish more DPS. And even if you get hit, it just freezes nearby enemies. So, so really not a bad skill, I would say. Coming up on this elite uh, thorny, just shoot it a bunch of times with the explosive crossbow, does crazy damage, and there we go. And another elite heater. This time is the this time is the twin variant. Again, not a problem. Um, I might even go as far to say that winning with the explosive crossbow is like too easy, because all you have to do is really is like mash the button and you just win. So I've been making a tier list for the fatal falls items that came from the DLC. There are seven in total, and I've just finished uploading it. Um, I am gonna be taking a little break from making videos. I'm going to into the prison depths and as you saw there, I replaced the explosive crossbow with a higher tier because I found it in the shop. Anyways, I'm gonna be taking a little break from making videos so, so don't be expected if this video doesn't come out like one week after my tier list video for Fatal Falls. I've just been burnt out a little from the game. Um, it's not like anything wrong with Dead Cells, I still really enjoy playing it. It's just that because of like real life circumstances, I wanted to like take a break from making videos. So hopefully people are okay with that. Um, I've seen some people say that they hope YouTube becomes my full-time job. And to be honest, I don't think it will. Uh, I make videos just for the fun of it and I don't really like 
think I want to make it into a career because I have other interests and I still have to finish college so anyways um something else I want to talk about is monetization of this channel so so as you all are probably aware by now this channel is now monetized how I'm going to manage monetization is that I'm going to put ads in the beginning of each video however I would not put mid rolls in any of my videos so I don't care if the video is like 20 30 or like even one hour long I will put an ad in the beginning and then that's it um for those who don't know the minimum duration in which you can put minerals in is eight minutes so if you make an eight minute video you can now put minerals in it used to be 10 minutes so that's why like there was the meme where like people are stretching their videos to 10 minutes but now it's just eight minutes so I'm not sure who knows that, but yeah. Because like I said before, YouTube is not my job. I don't intend for it to be my job. Just having a little money on the side is nice because it motivates me to create better quality content and I can use it to buy better equipment to record my videos because I really think I need a better mic. So that being said, it's not like I'm going to make a lot of money from the channel anyways. Thankfully, I have not yet been demonetized. I mean, I do like swear and curse in real life, but it's not really in my nature to do it. And plus, I don't want to get on YouTube's naughty list, so... For those who don't know, the thing that affects, like, the visibility of your channel the most is demonetization. So if you... So if a lot of your videos get demonetized or copyright striked, then it decreases the chance that YouTube will recommend it to other people. Definitely, it's not in anyone's interest to be demonetized. I try my hardest not to, like, get copyrighted content in my videos, including music. Usually, I check very extensively for a video game soundtrack because some of them are copyrighted. And I use music from the YouTube audio library. Um, there are other channels you can use, but the thing is, like some of them will actually copyright you. Even though they say that it's copyright free. So, but if you use music from YouTube's official audio library, then there is zero chance that you will get a copyright. And plus, you don't actually have to credit the artists. You can just put them in your video and then that's it. You are free to monetize it and you don't even have to give credit. This is not the case with some other like private channels that produce non-copyrighted music. I've seen a lot of instances where people complain that their videos are being copyrighted because they used music that they thought it was copyright free. So definitely it's something you gotta watch out for if you're planning to make V2 videos. Best to just play it safe and use music from the YouTube audio library. Anyways, I'm going to move on forwards to the Ancient Sewers because I think the range setup is really suited for fighting Conjunctivius. I'm still working on the biome guide for Dead Cells. Um, there are a lot of information to cover and that video will probably be probably like my most, probably be the video that needs the most amount of editing ever on my channel. On my tier lists, I've seen people say that they rather see like the footage of me using each weapon as I talk about it. But the thing is, there's like over 30 weapons in the game. Like, because like the effects you saw on the tier lists, like every time an item like moves onto a tier list, like that special effect actually takes a really long time to do. If I were to record like 30 different runs of me using the different items, then it would literally take forever. It's not that I don't want to do it, it's just that it, it would just take way too long. And it's just kind of unnecessary to be honest. But in the future, I will definitely try to like show footage of like me actually using some of the weapons as example, just like a, for a couple of seconds. So for the Fate of Falls DLC tier list, I am actually going to be showing footage of me using every single item because there are only seven in the first place. So it's not like it's going to take a lot of effort from my part. Anyways, moving forwards to the Conjunctivious fight. You'll see just how much damage I'm able to do to the boss because I have just crazy DPS with the explosive crossbow. I think the first attack, I thought the boss was going to do the thrust attack where like it dashes at me but for some reason he didn't do it. Anyways, just gonna like hammer it with the explosive crossbow. It's really not a, it's really not a hard fight, especially with this weapon. All you really have to do is spam the attack button. Um, and I also have a shield inside my backpack. Now, for those who don't know, if you have a shield in your inventory, every time you take damage, you actually like get a small like invincibility bubble. So you basically can't get like chained damage. So if two attacks get you like at the same time almost, if you don't have a shield in your inventory, 
then you will take both instances of damage. But that's not the case if you have a shield because the short invincibility bubble will like prevent the second instance of damage. But the thing is, the shield doesn't even have to be in your primary slot. You can just put it in your backpack and you still get the invincibility frames. So I'm not sure if this is supposed to be like an oversight from the devs part. But anyways, it's in your best interest to have a shield inside your backpack even if you don't plan on using it because it has like, you get invincibility frames, which is like a win-win for you. And you don't even have to do anything. Anyways, gonna move on to the second tentacle phase. Uh, cluster grenade isn't too good in this fight, uh, but I try to use it in the tentacle phase because at least it can hit multiple targets. Again, with the explosive crossbow as well as the scarecrow sickles, just gonna hit everything that comes up. And most of the time, they just die in one or two hits. And in no time, I'm going to move on forwards to the final phase of this fight. And it's basically downhill from here. I'm not, I don't remember if I no hit this fight, so I guess we'll see. There we are, that was an extremely good fight, no hit. Usually that doesn't happen, especially in the Conjunctivius fight. Um, I actually have a really hard time trying to no hit Conjunctivius. Anyways, gonna move on forwards to the Slumbering Sanctuary because I think I can take the challenge. For those who don't know, there is no food shop Slumbering Sanctuary, but there is a curse chest. So I think that makes the Slumbering Sanctuary is like the hardest biome at this level. So if you go to Graveyard, Still Village or Fractured Shrines, all three of them have food shops. But that's not the case with Slumbering. I would say definitely come here if you're like doing extremely well in terms of like your build. Like if you have a really powerful build, there's no reason you shouldn't come here because Slumbering Sanctuary ha actually has like, they give you, it gives you the most amount of rewards in terms of like scroll fragments. Anyways, I'm gonna activate the switch and then get the curse chest. I'm going to speed up the footage so it actually shows the part where I fight some enemies. I did kill a crab there, but the thing is, it was like really short and it doesn't really count since it was like spawned by the Malays. Anyways, gonna reach some actual enemies now and just with the explosive crossbow, this is just really easy. So as you saw like the runner, I think it spawned from the Malays. The thing about the runners is that they actually teleport and they teleport pretty fast. And on top of that, they actually attack you like with really fast speed. So as soon as they teleport to your location, they're going to attack you. So that's something you really have to watch out for. I just feel like they're much faster in terms of like the other enemies that actually teleport you because of the Malays. Anyways, you saw me take a bunch of hits there. I tried to look on the map for food and I didn't see any, so I'm just gonna take a health flask and it really, it goes to show like how fast things can go wrong in a run, even with a survival build where I have a lot of health. But honestly, it's all about if you can actually recover from mistakes. I mean, this game is pretty generous, even at 5 BC, because I think you are allowed to take some, mis you are allowed to like have some mistakes, but it's all about how you like, managed to fix them. Anyways, gonna keep on moving with the level. The explosive crossbow just really makes short work of these enemies. One thing that I really don't like are the protectors because I think they're actually one of the most annoying enemies in the game. And especially like in the earlier biomes like the promenade as well as corrupted prison. Because you have to deal with them so early, I just don't really like these biomes in general. But honestly, they provide some really nice rewards so. Whatever. At some point, I switched out the sickles for the death warp. I just think it didn't really make sense in this run. And of course, I'm referring to the scarecrow sickles. Because I do a lot of burst damage, I want my skills to also do burst damage. So, one other thing I wanted to talk about was the community tab. Now, for those who don't know, YouTube gives you the community tab when you reach 1,000 subscribers. Now, I've actually reached 1,000 subscribers like way back at the beginning of February. But the thing is, they never gave it to me, which is very weird. Basically, if you go on my channel page, there is a tab called called Discussion. If I had the Community tab, that tab would get replaced. But the thing is, they said that it usually takes around a week in order to you in order for YouTube to register that you have 1,000 subs, and then they give you the Community tab. But the thing is, yeah, they never gave it to me. So 
I know there is like the exploit that you can do with the, the community tab, uh, the spiffing Brit method apparently, where like you basically pull, you basically do like a poll with the tab, and then like it actually like increases the amount of people that actually can see it. I've been wanting to try that, but again, I just haven't been gone the community tab. So I have messaged someone at YouTube saying that how come I have I don't have it yet. But the thing is, they just said to be patient. That was a couple, I think that was a week ago. So right now I'm just waiting for it to actually register so I can get the community tab. I don't even know when that's gonna come. Maybe they're just afraid that more people will use like the method to break YouTube. Anyways, moving forwards to the caverns. Um, everything's just kind of trivial at this point. I have like, I have a really OP explosive crossbow and I'm just kind of demolishing everything, especially the ground shakers. I think I killed it in like one or two hits. I have my mutations as gastronomy. It's a very good mutation. Sometimes people take it even if they're not playing survival. Anyways, we also got the cluster grenade. We also got the death orb and as well as slowdown synergy with the frostbite mutation. And on top of that, we also have a shield in the backpack. So a lot of defense. And yeah, basically the explosive crossbow, I would say is like one of the best items you can use if you just wanted to cheese the game. Cause it's just so easy to use and it's just so powerful. Like you don't even need anything to synergize off of it. You basically just press the square button and then the enemy dies so i believe on my range tier list i gave explosive crossbow uh s tier now honestly it's probably still s tier in terms of like usefulness but in terms of fun i don't think it's very fun so maybe next time when things get reworked i'm going to change my rankings for explosive crossbow to a tier because i don't care like how powerful an item is but if it's not fun then i just don't I can't see it being S tier. Cause this game, like, I don't think it's like a game of grind. If you have fun with anything that you play with, then honestly, like, then it can work by itself. Like items that I think are S tier may not be S rank for you, basically. Someday I'll probably do like a run with the tentacle or the war spear, cause they're pretty interesting and I wanted to win with bad items. Cause I think that's like an achievement of its own, honestly. Still in the caverns for some reason, but I think like the armadillo pack just does a lot of work with the demons, just roll and then their projectiles just gets bounced back. Um, I think that the parry shield is actually pretty good if you put it in the backpack considering that like the projectile gets split into a bunch of like light beams and for some reason I picked up cocoon. I think it's because I wanted to try it out if I had a two-handed item. Gonna pick up a dual stat scroll that actually scales with survival so bring my total scroll stat to 29 which by this point is considered to be pretty high. Now at the end of this giant fight, I'm going to get 30 scrolls, and then I might go to Hypey Castle or Distillery to finish all my scroll stats, but I'm not sure if I can even see the amount of scroll fragments that I have right now, so we'll see how many I get at the end of this fight. Just gonna use the Cocoon to parry the projectiles, Again, Cocoon's really helpful, assuming that you don't actually miss with it. But again, that's basically the basis of this game, essentially. Don't get hit. So we got the giant down to half health. Um, going pretty well so far, though. It's not killing the giant as fast as I hoped it would. But honestly, because like the explosive crossbow is so good on its own, that I don't really care at this point. Just gonna throw the, the cluster grenade and, it just, and just keep hammering the giant with, with the explosive crossbow gonna roll which activates armadillo pack and then it just bounces all the projectiles back. I thought I could finish giant in that round of attacks but apparently I have to wait one more time. Just gonna jump in the air, use the explosive crossbow, use the cocoon to parry the projectiles. Does some amazing damage by the way. And surprisingly I can even hit the fists while I'm in mid air when I'm using the melee attack from the crossbow and there we go. That was a flawless giant fight. So it looks like I have two scroll fragments right now, and I'm going to move on forwards to Hypey Castle to finish off my scroll stats. For those who don't know, both Distillery and Hypey Castle both give you a total of two stat scrolls, assuming that you're playing in 4 or 5 BC. This means if you have two or three scroll fragments after you fight the giant, you can go to these biomes to clear it. And this might be one of the one and this might be one of the few reasons why you actually want to like go to these locations rather than skip Hypey Castle. Because if you fight the giant, you get the option to skip this biome. So definitely I would say try to find the opportunity to skip this biome if you can help it because it minimizes the amount of risk. 
But honestly, if you really want more scroll stats, um, and you want to fill out your scroll fragments, then you can always come here. Now, obviously, if you fight Timekeeper or Scarecrow, you don't really have a choice. You have to go to the Distillery or Hypey Castle. And on top of that, both of those bosses only give you three scroll fragments, so that's kind of a shame, honestly. But I like to picture the three bosses, the three second bosses of this game, as like playing different colors against you, so... Giant is basically playing a survival build against you because his attacks are slow, but they hit hard. Timekeeper is kind of like in the middle. She has both melee as well as range attacks, and honestly, it's not that bad once you get used to the fight. And then Scarecrow is a tactics build. It has like the least amount of health out of the three bosses, but like the Scarecrow will attack you literally like relentlessly with the with the melee attack. So definitely it takes the right know-how to plan your builds. But luckily from what I've seen, you can go to any of the three bosses. The, the second bosses. Like it doesn't matter which first boss you fought. So if you wanted so if you fought Conjunctivius, you can go to any of the second bosses. This includes Concierge as well as Mamatic. So a lot of freedom has been brought into the game, which I really like. So I'm gonna move on forwards to the Hand of the King fight. Again, this will be a breeze, though I'm not even though I'm not sure if I no-hit this fight. I did manage to no-hit the first two bosses in this game, so I don't know if my luck will hold up in this one. But Cocoon is handling this fight really well so far. Um Again, I think like with the Armadillo pack, it just makes one of the Hand of the King's attacks trivial. So far, I was I was really surprised I wasn't I didn't get hit by that like ground slam attack. Anyways, Hand of the King moves up, gonna kill all these elites. Pretty easy, honestly. Get back to the fight, and I'm going to wait for Hand of the King to like do one attack before I do anything else, because I think like sometimes you have to be patient in this fight, especially like in the 5 BC fight as well, actually. So just wait for Hand of the King to do one attack, and then I play defensively with the Cocoon so I can safely react to how I'm gonna approach. And finally, Hand of the King is dead, and that was a no-hit fight as well. So, really happy how that went out. Gonna, gonna fast forward this part of the footage, where I go on forwards to the Astrolab. So this is the final biome in the game, well, final biome before the final boss. And just like before, I'm just wrecking everything in this biome. Don't know what that bomber's doing, it never really came down, but whatever. Not a problem. And with the Frostbite mutation, the Protectors almost die like before they even, before I even went up to fight it. Anyways, yeah, you see just how helpful the Explosive Crossbow is here. Um, it basically makes anything in the game pretty trivial, honestly. Like, I might as well go as far as to say, the Explosive Crossbow will give you a free win as long as you know like how to use it a little bit, basically. Now, it is a two-handed item, so you are restricted to using these two like items exclusively. Sadly, they don't provide a lot of like diversity in terms of build choice with the two-handed weapons, but honestly, I think like some of them can work on its own. Gonna dodge the Librarian, and I hate it when this happens, but like when bombers join in on a Librarian's attacks, sometimes it makes it really hard to dodge, and sometimes you just have to take a hit in that scenario. Gonna fight the first elite build experiment, get the first key. Gonna continue on. I don't like to go to the tower area unless I have both of the keys, because I just don't really like backtracking. For some reason, I aggro the Librarian. At this point, I can't really do anything other than wait for it to finish its attacks. And I'm pretty glad that Bomber didn't come over here. Um, sometimes, like, you alert Bombers that's, like, off the screen, and sometimes that can be pretty annoying, especially when you're dodging Librarians. I remember that the first time I came to the Astrolab, I actually died to a Librarian, because I had, like, a build with slowdown, and then because the Librarian, like, fires three different light beams, I kind of, like, messed up the timing because it was slowed down, so... Really unfortunate, and on top of that, Librarian's attacks does a crap ton of damage. So you also have to be careful of that. I'm just gonna use the Cluster Grenade. It's still helpful in biomes, though in bosses, you kinda have to be a bit careful about it. What's really interesting about the Cluster Grenade is that you can actually like fire it into a wall, and like the bombs will become more concentrated because like you're firing it at a wall. So I think like that's one of the few ways it can be used in boss fights. But obviously, this doesn't apply to every single boss fight in the game. So I just released my Fatal Falls tier list video, and a lot of people say that the Iron Staff isn't as bad as it seems. But honestly, like, I don't think it's, like, terrible as a weapon. It's just that, like, you're more likely to hurt yourself if you actually try to use it than it actually working out. 
because in a lot of fights, like when you slam down into like a platform where there's like four or th like three or four enemies and you try to like use the iron staff, like you literally have to wait until one of them attacks you just so you can land the critical hits. And honestly, by that point, because a lot of the enemies have different attack patterns, it's just really hard to like pinpoint exactly when enemies will attack and how to correctly use the iron staff. Because like, if you're running Iron Staff, you are basically instinctively going to try to wait for enemies to attack you so that you can actually do critical hits. Um, I don't know what happened here, I got hit by the light beams. It's very unfortunate, they do hurt a lot, so, so probably it's in your best interest to not get hit by those, just wait. Just be patient, wait for an opportunity, and then you should be fine. That ex failed experiment was slowed down, that's why I got hit, so I'm going to go to the food shop, buy the food, and then come back. Luckily, I still have gastronomy, so I am able to heal all the way back to full health, so that's good. Gonna do the cheese with the two slammers, as always. I probably could have, like, done it legit, but honestly, I just didn't feel like it. Gonna move on forwards to the final boss, the collector, and this is gonna be the final stretch of the game. Um, in the past, I used to really struggle with this boss fight, actually, because I, I think, like, the problem that I have with the collector fight is that I'm just being too aggressive all the time. And when you're too aggressive in this fight, it can be really bad, especially, like, if the collector does the giant, like, meteor slam attack where, like, a bunch of meteors fall from the sky. If you're too aggressive in this, you will get hit by attacks. So with the spin attack, the Coon's going really well right now. Just gonna parry these job attacks really nice. And because, like, with the Iron Staff, in this fight, you just cannot, like, use the Staff at all. Because, like, if you manage to parry the Jab Attack, the thing is, the Collector will just, like, push you backwards, and you literally cannot hit him with the Iron Staff, because you're out of range, so... And I've seen, like, some other streamers do it, but you can't, like, you cannot parry the Tornado Attack, where he, like, spins around you. That's also kind of a, a weird thing. But you see how, like, during the last phase, I was able to throw the cluster grenade into the wall, and that's, like, how I was able to concentrate the amount of damage done to the collector, because all of the grenades from the cluster grenade fell, like, into the same area, essentially. And here, I'm just going to alternate my range as well as melee attack, and I think this is the collector's third heal. Gonna get teleported to the final room. So far, I have not taken a single instance of damage yet, um, uh, okay. Well, guess not. This is actually the third phase. So, got teleported to the spike ball room. Uh, honestly, this means that this fight's taking a bit longer than I expected, but honestly, it's not really that bad. As long as I have the cocoon, and for some reason, I just parried the spike ball. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't even know you could do that, actually. So that was really cool. I just kind of pressed the cocoon button instinctively because I thought the spike ball was coming. And to my surprise, you are actually able to parry it. So this is the final phase of Collector. I don't know if I get hit in this fight. I think I do, actually. So I do, lo so I do lose the no hit. This fight's actually taking a bit longer than I expected, but I think this is because I'm using the cocoon instead of something more aggressive. So again with the beam attacks, because sometimes I'm too aggressive in this fight, I get caught up with by like the tornadoes. And yeah, there I just get hit by the light beam. You see how much damage that does, so you generally don't want to get hit by that ground slam attack. Again with the thrust attacks, roll after the first jab attack and then just parry the other ones. Yeah, Cocoon's doing a lot of work for me here. And there we are, I get the Panacea and I think one of the... Uh, Explosive crossbow shots is going to kill him. For some reason, I couldn't pull it off, but finally, there is the run. Collector is down. So, the explosive crossbow is overpowered. It might be, like, too overpowered. Because I don't think I had a lot of fun in this run, actually. Because the run, honestly, was just too easy, in my opinion. So, I'm not sure if this is, like, entertaining to watch, but... Anyways, that was a run. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. In my next video, I'm going to feature a run with the barrel launcher. So stay tuned and thanks for watching, guys.